Aleluya, aleluya. 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 Oh, great is our God, man. Oh, great. Oh, great. We just giving thanks. We giving thanks. We woke up this morning. We woke up. We woke up. He blessed us with another morning. He blessed us. We didn't have to wake up. He didn't have to wake us up, but he wake us up. I give thanks when I woke up and I see that feeling. I thank him because he sent me on my way with brand new grace, brand new mercy. Oh man, that mean I'm good for the rest of the day. No matter what's going on, I am good. No matter what I'm going through, no matter what you're going through, know that God will fix it. Just know you will fix it. Doesn't matter what, don't let it bring you down. I know it's easy to say what's hard to do. Just trust in God. Just trust in Him. Even sometimes when you think you don't have nothing left, just reach down in your stomach. God put it down there. Just a little bit more faith. Just believe in Him. People will disappoint you. People will turn their back on you. People say, I will do this, I will do that. But when that time comes, they know where to find. They all gone. But guess what? God never make a promise that he broke it. He never. Learn to depend on him. Learn to trust in him. Stop putting all your faith in people. Put your faith in God. That it's a, I learned to trust in him in all times. Too good and too bad. I'm going to trust in him. I don't care what it is. I'm going to trust in him. I'm going to trust. I'm going to trust no matter what it takes. No matter how much it hurts. I'm going to trust because I'm telling you. Being a Christian and being delivered, it's not easy. It's not easy. It's not easy because everybody come and test you. Everybody come and test you. Why they know you are delivered, you're a Christian, you're not going to tell them where to put it at. They know you're just going to just humble yourself. Because I trust in God. Always tell a person, be careful putting your mouth, your hands on God people. Worry about that person that you tell that do something to you or you do something and they curse you out, that you're okay. But when that person said to you, I just leave you to God, you got some problems right there. You got some problems right there because they just leave it to God. Just learn to trust in God, people. Just learn. Just learn. Everybody will let you down, but God won't. Jesus won't. He won't let you down. No matter what. We're going through childhood days right now. School getting chewed up, people getting killed back and forth. It's just like the whole world going crazy. It's time to just trust. Go back in God. Go back in God. Just go back. Everybody wants to forget about God and forget. But when it comes down to that, to, to that moment, I remember they take pride out of school. You can print in school. You can print public area. But I was, I, I was watching something, and I see when that football player went down on national TV. Everybody get down on their knee, and guess what? They was praying. They was praying. Because they know what? All the millions you have, you can't do what God does. You can't do what God does. It doesn't matter what you have. No matter what, God gives the doctor that power. But whatever God will, God's will will be done. We got to get back where we was. Like I said, you got to get back where you was. I'm where I'm at and I would never change. I don't care who it is. I would never change. I'm never ever going to go back. I'm going to walk over you, I'm going to leave you, and I'm going to go pray for you. Facebook fans, we want to welcome you. 
We want to tell you this service not going to be the same without you. We welcome you. We want you to share. Please invite somebody else on. Just tell them that the best church in the world is on. The best church. Ain't another one like it. This is the only ground right here. Whatever you need is here. Whatever you need, we are what you need and I need is different, but whatever you need is here. This is the church of deliverance, miracle, restorance. Whatever you need is here. The only ground right here. 51 Troop Avenue, Mount Calvary, New Brunswick, New Jersey is the place to be. You want a church home? Come here. You will be welcome soon as you walk in the door. You will get a smile. And we got the best apostle in the world. The best apostle. Ain't get better than that. We ain't got a better one. I don't know a better one. Anointed from the sole of her feet to the crown of her head. I'm telling you, she will cover you. She will pray for you. Whatever you need, she'll do it. We got the best assistant pastors. We got the best praise team, the best musicians, the best elders, the best ministers, ushers. We got all the way from the head down to the janitors. I pray that they all be blessed and whatever they need, they get it abundantly. Continue to pray for me and I do the same. Be blessed.
not all of us, amen. And guess what? He can do it all at one time. Hallelujah. That's the God that we serve. Hallelujah. He said, I could call him in the morning. I could call him in the middle of the night. When I call him, he'll make everything all right. I did stood to uh, do our scripture. Let us stand. Our scripture will be coming from Matthew chapter 6. I'll read verses 24 and 25. Matthew chapter 6, verses 24 and 25. No man can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one and love the other, or else he will hold to the one and despise the other. He cannot serve God and mammon. Therefore I say unto you, take no thought for your life, what ye shall eat or what ye shall drink, nor yet for your body what ye shall put on. Is not the, is not the life more than meat and the body than rain? God's word to God's people. Amen. You can't not serve two masters. Man, there's only one. Let us bow our heads in prayer. Oh, gracious and heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord. We praise you on this morning, Lord, and we glorify you. Father God, you are worthy, worthy to be praised, Lord. We come before you, Father God, just giving you all that honor, Lord. Father God, we thank you that we are here, Lord. We don't take it for granted, Lord. Father God, we just want to say thank you, Lord. Father God, I thank you, Father God, for the angel of this church, Lord. Father, bless her, Father God. Lord, as she brings forth that word, Lord, we thank you, Lord, Father God, for the word that is about, Father God, to be, to be spoken. We thank you, Father God, that it will not fall, Father God, on, 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 on a it will fall, Father God, on solid ground, Lord. It will fall on fertile ground, Lord. Father God, that when it comes forth, Father God, there will be not one, Father God, dry eye in this place, Lord. We thank you, Father God, that it will pierce hearts, Father God. Lord, we know, Father God, Father, that those, Father God, that are here, Father God, are searching, Father God. We love you, Lord, Father God. We need you, Father God. Lord, we are like that deer that panteth by the water, Lord. Father God, we need, we're hungry, we're thirsty. Thee, Lord. Fill us, Father God, with your word, Lord. Father God, we ask, Father God, that as we're here, Father God, Lord, Father God, we just ask for that Holy Spirit to reign all over this place, Father God. Lord, Father God, that it will be, Father God, like fire, Lord. Father God, that we can't, Father God, sit still, Lord, that we will have to just go down on our knees, cry, whatever it is, Father God, that we have to do, Lord. Father God, just to hear you, Father God. Father God, to be able, Father God, to absorb Lord, what it is, Lord, that you want us to hear, Lord. Father God, we have some minds that are troubled, Lord. We have some, Father God, that have come for healing, Lord. We have some, Father God, that just simply want to worship you on this morning, Lord. Father God, and we thank you, Lord. Father God, we find it an honor, Father God, on today to be here, Lord. Father God, you didn't have to, but you did. When we woke up this morning, Lord, we woke up, Father God, with breath in our bodies, Lord. We thank you for that, Lord. And Father God, we just ask, Father God, Lord, Father God, we see the condition of this world. We know it's a dying world, but we know, Father God, that you are yet to come, King, Lord. You're soon to come, Lord. And Father God, we just want to say thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father God. We pray for our young people, Lord, Father God. We thank you, Father God, for the revival that is happening in Asbury, Lord. We ask you to protect those young people, Father God, as they worship you, Lord. Father God, I pray, Father God, that so poor souls will be saved, even in this place, Father God. Lord, we just thank you, Lord. We know, Father God, that it's not by might, it's not by power, but by your spirit, Lord. And we thank you, Father God, for that Holy Spirit that will reign in this place on today, Lord. So, Father God, we thank you once again, Lord. Father God, all the glory, all the honor, all the praise goes to you. We thank you, praise you, and glorify you. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen, amen, and amen to God be the glory. Jesus, 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 what a wonder you are. Jesus, 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 what a wonder you are. Jesus, 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 what a Jesus, 
what a wonder you are. Everybody say Jesus.
Y'all let that go down this little because I need everybody to hear this. Will be a pastor's care program today at four o'clock here in the building. Amen. Pastor's care today at four o'clock. Pastor Griff, Kathy Griffin will be our preacher for this afternoon. That is at four o'clock. And let us not forget our midweek service, which is uh, Wednesday noonday prayer here at the church at 12. And Wednesday night Bible study will be via the phone this week. And um, Mother Mary would like to have everyone to stay after church for about for a few minutes after service. And um, we'll have our Black History moment after the um, offering. Amen. And we're having a code red service March 4th, March 4th here at the church. And we're asking that everybody, everybody dressed in red with black accessories. This is from the pastor, red with black accessories, amen. And the one who has the best outfit, I don't know who that's gonna be, but pastor is gonna get dressed that day. She gonna be in the competition, so I don't know what, you know. I'm not really sure what's going to happen, amen, <laughs> amen, but everybody that's going to be a part is to um, wear red with black accessories, and I believe the offering for that day will be $25 from each member, and there will be a black history program here at the church Saturday, at this coming Saturday at 6 o'clock, the black history that we have every year that used to be at Voorhees. At, um, it's sponsored by Rutgers, but we, they used to have it at the Voorhees Chapel, but it's going to be here at our church at 6 o'clock on Saturday. Please come out and support that program, and please, not, let's not forget all of the um, announcements and all of the programs that are coming. Amen? One more announcement while they're collecting. Um, those of us that promised the $300 crossover seed, you can see me um, with the offering. Amen. Those of you that I have a list, and if you want to see me after service, you can. Amen. Father God, we thank you and we bless you, God, for this offer. We ask that you will bless those who gave, those who had the desire to give but didn't have it. We ask that you were blessed and which it was taken for in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen for our Black History Moment. Poet, dancer, singer, activist, and scholar, Maya Angelou was a world famous author. She was best known for her unique and pioneering autobiographical writing style. On April 4th, 1928, Margaret Ann Johnson known to the world as Maya Angelou, was born in St. Louis, Missouri. After her parents' divorce, she was sent to live with her grandmother. Shortly after, she returned to live with her mother at the age of seven. Angelou was raped by her mother's boyfriend. He was later jailed and then killed 
when released from jail. She believed that her confession of what her uncle, what her mother's boyfriend did to her caused him to be killed. So she became a mute. She stopped talking for six long years. Later, she found her voice. She began to write. It was evident at an early age that she could do poetry, essays. She kept a journal. She also helped out in World War II after moving back with her mother in Oakland, California. She was a women's army corpse. At the age of 19, she was accepted for her position and became the first African-American woman to work as a streetcar conductor in San Francisco. After graduation, Angelou undertook a series of jobs to support herself and she had a son that she supported. She was noted for her talents as a singer and a dancer, Calypso, Cabaret Styles. In 1950, African-American writers in New York City formed the Harlem Renaissance, and it was called the Harlem Writers Guild to nurture and support the publication of black authors. Angelou joined in 1959. In 1969, Angelou published I Know Why the Caged Bird Sings. And that's an autobiography of her early life. It tells of her personal strength as a child. It tells about her trauma. It tells about racism that she endured. It talks about how even though she went through all of those abuses, sexual abuse, mental abuse, some physical abuse, that she still had a voice on the inside, that she still had talent on the inside. She has such uh, poetry writings as, give me a drink of water for I die. On the pulse of the morning, she won a Grammy for that one. That was on a word, spoken word album. She also delivered that poem at President Bill Clinton's inauguration in 1993. She won a Grammy in 1995. Angelou carried out a wide variety of activities on stage and screen as a writer. This is a woman of note. She died in 2014. There are several memorials held in her honor. In 2011, President Barack Obama awarded Angelou the Presidential Medal of Freedom, the country's highest civilian honor it was a fitting recognition for Angelou's remarkable and inspiring career in the arts. She also says, and still I rise, a phenomenal woman. Let that be a lesson to all of us. We don't know how many of you are sitting in here who have suffered some trauma, but there's still purpose in you. There's still greatness in you. Your story is still being written, just like Maya Angelou's. God bless you.
here today. Am I the only one? Hey, come not that I bullshit.
loosen up Christians in here today. I wish I could find somebody in here that been through something. message and then I'm gonna come back Nita where'd she go she went here she come I'm gonna go to the middle because young man right here God gave me a word for you I tell you here she come the young man standing right here God gave me a word for you he said to tell you it's working for your good Give her a mic. Give her a mic so he can hear precisely what the Lord is saying. No, 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 sir. Tell him not to talk. I need him to listen because God is speaking. Glory to God. Tell him the Lord gave me a word for him. Hallelujah. <laughs> And I wrote it on here. And so y'all would know, I, she came in the office. Elder came in the office. And Elder said, what's the scripture? I said, I don't know. Because I studied. I was ready. <laughs> Sister Alfred, Pastor Alfred, I was ready. <laughs> but God sent me in the office. And he said, no, I got something else. <laughs> because see, it's not my way, but it's God's way. It's not what I need or what I want. <laughs> Sister Bill, but it's all about Jesus and the people of God. Come here, come here. I, I, I want to show you that God restructured this message for you. Uh, what? Restart right there. And you might be knocked down, but you're not counted out. Puede ser que te que que te caiga, pero que no te lo separa. 
It's working for my good. Y esto va a ser por tu bien. Brother, God said, tell you. God told me to tell you, brother. Yes, I had to write this down, Crystal, because I'll get excited and I'll forget some things. But God said, not today. Hallelujah. This is what the sovereign Lord says to you. I, I need him to listen and not. He, he can testify later, but now I need him to hear what the sovereign Lord is saying. Brother Tony, because when God speaks, he wants us to listen. There's a scripture that says, just sit, be still and know that I am God. Y'all ain't going to say nothing. Hallelujah. But this is what he said. He said, tell the brother. Dile al hermano. Your congregation is tu congregación. not in the building. No es en el, no es en el edificio. No es en el edificio. And when you, and when you congregate, and when you congregate to fill the building, it makes you and the ministry look and feel good. I'm going to give him a chance. I'm going to give him a time. Because God is speaking. But not only is he speaking to him, there's someone else in here that the Lord is giving the same message to. And I don't know who you are, but the Lord said, tell you, it is not by chance that you came in this building today. It's not by chance. You're in here on an assignment. He said, tell you that don't worry about making the ministry look good or big. But the ministry that God is preparing you for is building on the inside of you. People don't see it right now. Sister Bill, because it's on the inside of you. And God is building you from the inside out. He said, and this ministry is going to cause some pain. Some preparation, preparation, determination, y determination, preservation, preservation, persistent, tiene que estar consistente, and consistent, y consistente. consistent. To God be the glory. Come on, give God some. Whoever else this is, he said, they feel, they fail to realize that God has much more in store for you. I said they fail to realize because they can't see what God is doing on the inside. They only see what the natural eye can see. But that's why you go through so much hell. That's why the enemy is pulling and pushing and, and won't give you a break. And that's why it seems like that every time you make two steps forward, you end up making five or six backwards. Because God is building the ministry inside of you. some work anything worth having is worth working for I stayed married 52 years and 4 months because I worked at it because I didn't give up when the going got rough 
The reason I've been here 16, going on 17 years with tears, with pain, with heartache, with my lights getting cut off, with my car being repossessed, is because I didn't give up. See, you see the glory, but you don't know my story. But look at your neighbor and say, neighbor! to go Anita but I need you I, I need you to run and get me J-Bass real quick I think it's first chronicles y'all help me real quick J-Bass said enlarge my territory J-Bass said bless me indeed and Jabez said, and Lord, why are you doing it? Don't let me cause pain to anybody. Because in the beginning, his mother said, I bore him in pain. But when we go through pain in the church, instead of getting stronger, we shut down. Y'all ain't going to say nothing right there. I don't go to church because... Somebody hurt my feelings. I don't go to church because my stockings got a run in them. I'm not going to make it today because I got up late and I had a flat. If I get there at the benediction, I'm going to get what God want me to have. Because I'm not giving up. It's working. Tell somebody it's working for my good. All the things that I had to go through. It didn't break me, but it's making me. Hey! You got it? Yes. Come on, step, give me that first, and then I'm going on to where God, if he allowed me. Come on. His mother named him Jabez. Talk about Jabez. Jabez's oh. mother, yes. Oh, the pain. Mm. Saying, a painful birth. Yes. I bore him in great Pain. Hold it right there. Solomon, let me talk to you. Since you're sitting up looking, looking so handsome. How about you being the baby? And every time you turn around, you are reminded that you are the one that gave mama the most pain coming in the world. How in the world can you celebrate a birthday knowing that you caused pain coming in the world? Baby, tell me how can you go to your mama and say, Mama, I thank you that you didn't abort me, but you had me. And she turned around and said, Yeah, but you caused me so much pain. Thanks. That hurt, won't it? But rather than Jabez uh, taking the comment that his mother made and saying, Lord, I'm just a mess. I was born a mess. I came in the world a mess. I ain't going to never amount to nothing. You don't have to tell me because I see it for myself. Because mama, the only relationship I had before I came out the womb was with mama. And I came out by her saying, I bow him in pain. How do you think that should have made JB? Because that's what we do. But tell your neighbor, it's working for my good. It's working for my good. So what we have to do is take that negative now and turn it into a positive and let it work. Because God, I promise you, he won't put no more on you than you can bear. And that won't kill, that don't kill you, it'll make you stronger. Doing, oh God, I, I, I'm just going to be, can I be transparent? Can I, can I need a? Yes. Doing the 
years of marriage, I had some folk because I shared my business with the wrong folk. And I had some folk that tell me you still with that N-word. He this or he that. But I stayed there because what happened in my marriage made me stronger. What are you talking about? Because today I can tell young married couples, stay there. That that God have joined together, let. I can tell you that because been there, done that. And I can tell you that trouble don't last always. I can tell you that it's a bad wind that never changed. And I can tell you that sooner or later, God's going to turn it around. Yeah. And it's going to work in your favor. But I can't tell you unless I've been through it. Uh-huh. I can't tell you how I feel to be drunk. Never drink. Can't tell you how I feel to be high. Never smoked. Can't tell you none of that. I can't tell you how to be gay. I've never been that way. But God has put a passion inside of me. If you're drunk, come on. If you're a drug addict, come on. Come on. Come on. If you're a gay, come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Because God made us all. Uh, come on. Tell somebody it's working for your good. It's working for your good. And what I need you to understand that everything you're going through is because God is preparing you for greater. That's right. And you can't get there sitting on your stoop of do nothing. Come on. Oh, I want to preach today. Oh, shucks. I wanted to preach. But God said now it's time for the church. To come out of the world yeah. and get back churchy. Yeah. The church needs to come out of the world and get back churchy. You can't tell the difference no more. Oh, I know times have changed. But the Bible said that we are peculiar people. Yeah. And you shall know them by the fruit uh-huh. the world plant apples and expect to get pears the world plant peaches mm. peach seeds and they expect to pull up tomatoes but the church ought to know better uh-huh. y'all ain't gonna say nothing right there the church ought not to act like the world. We ought to convince the world to act like the church. The ecclesia, the called out. I'll be that way in the church, but when I go into my workplace, you don't know who I am. Because I'm acting like you. Dressing like you. My language is just like yours. I can't help you that way. I'm not going to turn you away. Y'all ain't going to say nothing right here. I said y'all ain't going to say nothing right here. Because you walk in the church drunk. I'm not going to turn you away because you walk in the church with your wife, woman, on your arm. I'm not going to turn you away, men, because you walk in like a woman and you know that God made you a man. Because if you can't go to the hospital and get healed. Come on. Come on. And I, I ain't never walked in no hospital. And I was sick. And they said, where's the pain? And I say, right here. And they hit me with a hammer. Come on. That's good. That's good. That causes more pain. I don't know what God is doing here. Brother Eric, I don't, I don't know what. Oh. My God. But he told me to tell you, whatever you're going through, whatever your battle is, whatever your discretion is working for your good. Yeah. Look at your neighbor.
and said, neighbor, God got a plan. It's not over yet, Brother PT. God got a plan. God's working out something. Ah, yeah, don't bullshit. I don't care what they say about me no more. I used to smile and go home and cry. Don't eat. Don't sleep. I smile and go home and eat and sleep. It's working for my good. You show up. Hallelujah, it's working for my good. If you don't show up, God showed me how to do praise and worship by myself. He showed me how to read the scripture and then preach. If you don't show up, he showed me how to open the door and say, come on in. God told Ezekiel, he told Ezekiel, I'm coming back there, I'm coming, I'm coming. But I got to tell you what, what God said, because this is working for your good. Stop being so mealy and miley and uh, uh, uh. Get over yourself. You are fearfully and wonderfully made. Marvelous are thy works. But you got to know who you are. God told Ezekiel, he said, I, I want you, I'm not saying that Ezekiel had got puffed up because he was a prophet. He was a man of God. And as a man of God, God talked to his prophets. As a matter of fact, he said, I won't tell nobody until I tell my prophets first. So when God telling me about you before he tell you about yourself, it makes me feel just and smart, anointed, and upon it. But then God said to Ezekiel, this is what I want you to do. Go to the graveyard. I know you got a church full of living folk. I know you got some ushers. I know you got some armor bearers. I know you got a praise team. But this Sunday, Ezekiel, I want you to go to the graveyard and preach to some dead folk. Mm. Wow. <laughs> that you're above anything or anybody. But by the grace of God, there go you. Yeah. Oh my God. Tell somebody, Elder K, look at it and say, it's working for my good. It's working for my good. It's not going to break me. It's going to make me stronger. My sister and I was talking this morning. In the office, I, I think there was, I don't remember who it was. Maybe God don't want me to know, remember rather, right now. But we was talking about the clothes and the shoes and the coats that we wear now, the bags. And I said, what I wear, I wear it prideful in the name of Jesus. Because there was a time that I had to wear my sister's shoes when they took them off. We go to church in the morning, and and they would have an outfit on. And when we go back to church, I would put their top on, and they would put my skirt on, so it looked like a whole different outfit. But we knew what was going on. That was the best that mother and daddy could do. And then mother worked for a little short time for a white family down the road. And as soon as her kids outgrew their things, they put them in a garbage bag. Yeah, they had garbage bags back there. Mm -hmm, they did. We didn't have them, but they had them. We just had the cans. And so they would put them in the garbage bag and give them to us, to my mother for us. And then what we had to do, my mother would bring them home and she would wash them and starch them and, and fix them up and match them up. And people thought we was rich. But we were wearing hand-me-down white folk clothes. Come on. Then, tell somebody that was then. That was then. And this is now. This is now. And, and, and so what I'm telling, it worked for my good. Because now what I do, I share. What do you mean? You give folks your old clothes? Not necessarily. I'll take them to the store with me when I'm going shopping and say, God told me to buy you an outfit. Because I know how it feels to be down. I know how it feels to have nothing and people are laughing at you. It 
was eight of us in a little saber, two in the front, and six of us piled in the back seat on our way to church. Mm. And people would laugh. Look at all the people in that car. Mm. I get in my car, my, y'all know what I drive, by myself. I don't have to have a rider. But it wasn't always that way, so I know how it is. So while we're turning our nose up at other folk, because I, you, she got, but you ain't got. And rather than saying, I love that beautiful blouse. Right. It's so pretty. Right. You see her come up in there with that blue and all, her head all tied. It. Oh, I thought she was going to choke herself. Huh. Jealousy have no place where. Now, let me preach. Come on, Nita. Finish me with j Baz and let me go on back. His mother. Jabez prayed to the God of Israel. See, what you got to do when you get in your situation, you got to pray. Jabez didn't cry. Ma, why you say that about me? You didn't say it about the other brothers. What about them? They're no better than me. Woe is me. Woe is me. Woe is me. The Bible said Jabez didn't say how old he was, did it? No. But he prayed. And you know what that tells me? Somebody in Jabez's house had a prayer lock. Uh -huh. Somebody had to know how to pray to teach that boy how to go to Jesus. Come on here, Nita. Bless me. Bless me. Oh, bless me. Yes, God. Give me land. Yes. Large tracts of land. You don't have to lay with nobody. You don't have to slay nobody. You don't have to sell drugs. You don't have to sell your body. Just go to Jesus and God will supply every one of you. Anybody know he will? Mm -hmm. I tried him. Wrote the check. Over a thousand dollars didn't have the money in there. I, get, I just got on the plane and went on my way. And I told him, I said, you can't put the check in now because if you put it in now, it's going to bounce. I said, but give it to the end of the week and then go put the check in. I don't have the money. Some way, somehow. That was on a Wednesday. Sunday morning, text started rolling. $500 a whop. People were sowing into me. Hadn't even went in the pulpit to preach yet. And before the day was over, I had every dime I needed and more. Come on. Because I did like Jabez. I took it to God. Can they, uh, can they? I took it to Jesus. And I told him what I need. Didn't come to the church and I know if I had came to the church. Sister Tawana, y'all was going to bail me out, wasn't you? I know you was, right, Mother Ann? Keisha? But God said, don't bother them because they got their own issue. Don't go to Nita and Tony because they got their own problems. But if you come to me, I'm able to do exceeding abundantly. Above all, you can ask a thing. According to the power, watch this. The power is in you to get what you need. Yet we go to welfare. We go to well care. We go sit up to, to the mortgage lenders. Oh, please. We go to them, but we, then we want to pray God. You pray before you go and then you walk in there like you got it going on. I said, put the check in on Monday. I left Wednesday. I said, hold on to it. Put it in on Monday. But by Sunday, everything I needed and more. Y'all ain't going to say nothing. There are three of you in here. Three, three, three. Somebody shout three. Three. Been waiting on God to move in your situation. I need to prophesy today and tell you that by Friday, somebody shout Friday. Friday. Jump to your feet. If that's you and say, God, do it by Friday. I touch and agree. I touch and agree. I touch. Oh. It is so. It is so. Turn it around, go. Oh. My Savior. 
Somebody else said, watch this, watch this, sister. Somebody else said, I will stay, but I don't want nobody in my business. God is all in my business. <laughs> Woo, God. What did you say? And provide your personal protection. Provide what? Your personal protection. I want God to guard my money. Because, see, I don't even know what I have, but God knows. So before it gets to you, somebody will rob. They'll be waiting on you. By the time you get to the corner, somebody waiting on you, pulling a gun, saying, out the car. They'll put you out of your own car and rob it. Rob you and take your car. But if God is guarding it. Read, finish it, I'm going to tell you all a good story. I'm about to finish, I'm about to finish. Come on. Don't let evil hurt me. Yes. God gave him what he asked. God, look at somebody. Now, those three people, I think it was four that stood. I want you to stand up one more time and say, God already did it. Come on, say, God already did it. By Friday, I'm going to reap it. But it's all done. Come on, tell somebody. Let me just tell y'all this. Sit down, sit down, sit down. I don't like people telling me to sit down and stand up. But listen, let me tell you this. I was in California getting ready to come home. The Lord told me, he said, change your flight. And I just spoke. I said, maybe I'll, I'll change my flight before I could get it out of my mouth. My sister was already on the computer changing my flight. Tell somebody it's working for you good. Hallelujah. And she was already changing my flight. And then, I, and I'm looking, I said, but wait, I, I was just, but she changed the flight and then paid for the changes. I sit to the table the day that we were supposed to fly out. And I'm sitting to her dining room table, the three of us, and I, and the Lord, I said to God privately, I said, why can't I go home today? And he simply answered me and said, you will know later. Sister Bill, that's what he said. And, and I said it out. Well, and I said, wait. I asked God why I couldn't go home today. And he said, you will know later. We took sister to the flight. Put her on the flight. My sister and I went back home, Keisha. She got on the plane. She called me. And she said, I don't know the real reason that God didn't let you fly. Because when I told them that I couldn't go, that the plane had to go without me, she, she was like, oh, happened, God protecting you and not me. I said, no, 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 it's not that. It's not about you. It's about me. You hear me, brother? And so when, I, when, when she got home, she called me. She said, I know one reason that God prevented you from getting on the flight. I said, why? She said, there were cats on the plane. And the cats be on all night long. That they didn't get no sleep. Y'all know me. Y'all know already, right? Do you know? If a cat walk in the front door, I'm out the back. God prevented me from getting on that plane. He changed my whole schedule to protect me. What did Jabez ask God to do? Protect him from all evil. And I didn't have to die. And then when, after that, then I got called to, to another church while I was out there at the last minute. You don't know what God had planned for your life. We can, we can share it, but this belongs to me, baby. You don't know what God has in store for your life. He said it's not by chance that you're here. God sent you here for the blessings that's going to hit you by Friday. Come get her a hug for me. 
by Friday. You've been waiting on God. You even stopped praying about it because you didn't think you were praying right. You didn't know. Am I, am I in your house? Am I in your house? But how many of you know that God got a way to do what he want to do? And it, it is his good pleasure to bless you. To prosper you. You don't know the plan that God has for your life. You haven't seen nothing yet. God said, now I'm getting ready to bless you. Now I'm getting ready to show you why you had to cry. Now I'm getting ready to, hey God, to show you why the pain was so hard. God said, I'm turning your situation all the way around. All the way around. Wait a minute. Is this? Watch. As a matter of fact, I need you to go sit by your wife. Y'all put the camera on them for a minute. Now, now God told me, I, I ain't, could y'all look over that way? God said, tell you, don't move. Be still and know that he is God. Listen to the instructions. Follow the blueprint. God is getting ready to elevate you. You, you see your, your, your feet planted? Stand up for one minute. Just stand up for one minute. God says when he elevates you, you're going to be at least a half an inch taller. Bless me indeed. Enlarge my territory. Tell your neighbor it's working for my good. Now, now Lord, let me get out of here, Jesus. Let me just finish up. Can y'all give me just two more minutes? Two more minutes. This is what the Lord said. <laughs> Glory be to God. Isaiah 54, 17. I want y'all to remember this right here. He said, and tell you no weapon. No weapons. No fiery darts of the wicked. No weapon that is formed against you shall prosper. And every tongue that rises against you in judgment. Watch this. God said, I'm not going to condemn it. You fix the problem. Yeah. Woe is me. Lord, I'm hungry. You sitting up in the bed, your bedroom upstairs. Lord, I'm hungry. Lord, I'm hungry. Lord, I'm hungry. And you can smell big biscuits, bacon, eggs, grits downstairs. And you sitting upstairs talking about, Lord, I'm hungry. God said, I'm not going to fly it up to you. Go down. The table is set. It's been prepared for you. You don't know the plan that I have for your life. I want to prosper you. I want to bless you. I want to bring you to an expected place. God bless you, Joshua. It's so good to see you, baby. Stop your music. Don't stop your rapping. And if you stop, get back to it. God said, that's how you're going to bless your mama. Too many times we look at our kids and we judge them. Cut it out. Every basketball player that's been successful either his mama or his daddy or both of them have pushed them and that's why they made it but we want to talk about that's the wrong music that's this that's that let them let God do it but then you let God do it take your hands off of it God will do it for you no weapon 
against you shall prosper. Every tongue that rides against you in judgment, you shall condemn. This is the part I like, James. He said, this is the heritage of the most high God. Of the people of the most high God. And their righteousness is of me. Y'all ain't going to say nothing. Y'all come on, take me on out. You might be knocked down, but don't count you out. It's working for your good. Tell your neighbor, neighbor. Ah, neighbor, neighbor, neighbor. It's working for my good. Don't judge me. Bear with me. Some of y'all came in here today with just a little alcohol on your breath. You put your mix in. Hey. That didn't do the trick. Smoke just a little bit before you came through the door. Put a little cologne on you. That didn't do the trick. But thank God. Even in that mess, you came on through the door. Because God said, whosoever will, oh, let him come. I can't wash you. How you know you can't pass? <laughs> because I couldn't wash myself. <laughs> but Jesus, somebody shout Jesus. 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 Mary's baby. I'm almost done. He said, tell them this is not an unusual setback. God is setting you up for a mighty comeback. No weapon. Don't worry about the adversaries. No weapon. Don't worry about the naysayers. No don't worry about the haters. No weapon. Don't worry about it. God already stamped his approval on it. It's going to work. It's going to work. It's working for your good. I don't care what the devil say. I'm on my way. If I see it and I want it, I'm going to ask God first. And if God said go get it, it's mine. You ought to do the same. Don't sit in like wanting it and think you can't have it. If you lean on Jesus, I promise you, you won't let you fall. working for my good God bless you Facebook stay encouraged if you lean on Jesus I promise you he won't let you fall trust in the Lord with all your heart lean not to your own understanding but in all your ways acknowledge him and he'll direct your path go with God and I'll see you right back here next week. Come on, give God some glory. <laughs>